Here are a few tips to make your shadows less boring and distracting. So I've noticed this to be a problem with a couple of my students that I've had before. And I'd say that the main problem is that you're not getting the reference that you should, when, especially when you're working from a phone. But the thing is, there are tools in your phone that will help you get better photos. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is before you even take that photo, just consider what's happening in the shadows. Is what you're observing actually interesting color or is it really dark and nondescript in real life? So once you determine that, you can decide, okay, what do I want to do with these shadows if they don't end up working for me? And we'll get to that in a bit. But if you do have a lot of information in your shadows, but your phone isn't picking them up with your camera, let me show you a couple tips to get better results. So I use an Android and I just use the stock camera that comes pre-installed. So first thing I'll do is just take a photo of the scene, no adjustments in my camera. I'll let it do its auto focus, auto exposure and all that. So the picture that I'm showing you right now is that. Just took the photo, no adjustment. And so what it usually will do is expose for the light in your scene. So I, that's naturally what it would expect to do because most people are interested in what's happening in the light. Problem is, if you copy this photo exactly as you see it, it's just gonna end up being sort of a dark brown, dark gray brown. We don't necessarily want that, do we? So what we need to do instead is you tap on your screen and it'll bring up the little sun icon. So then you can up the exposure up to where you can see the shadows, but maybe not completely blow out the lights in the picture. So once we do that, we have a photo that has all the information we want in our shadows. And then vice versa, if you're photographing, say, a backlit scene and your camera's not capturing all of the stuff in the light because it's exposing for the shadow, you drag the sun icon to the left and that will expose more for what's in the light. So at least in Android, I have on my camera app something called Pro Mode, and it's the icon on the top left of the screen when you go into uh, scroll over and go into more. So you got all these different options. That's where you get like slow-mo and hyperlapse video and things like that. So you click on Pro, and it brings up all sorts of different more professional types of settings for your camera. You could change the ISO, the shutter speed, the white balance. You could even change the focus type, but uh, really the only things that we really have to deal with is the ISO and the speed. And you just, so you can adjust those and it's a lot like using a DSLR camera. So that's another way of going about it if you want even more control over precisely what you get in your shadows. So then from there, if you wanna take it even a step further, if you have Photoshop or Lightroom or you know one of the open source equivalents, you can grab the photo that you took in pro mode and it's actually a DNG file, which means it's kind of a raw format. And then you can adjust it in Lightroom like you would a picture from your DSLR camera. So that's really cool as well. So you can work with it without garbling the image by using a JPEG format. So then what I do in Photoshop is I combine all the pictures and create sort of a middle ground of a reference that has enough detail and color information in both the light and shadow so I can get as approximate to the scene in real life as I can without actually being there. So for a phone camera, this is pretty good. I, I'm pretty happy with what my results are here. So next thing, when we go to paint, we change our shadow colors to relate to the scene better. So once you have the info in the shadows that you can refer to in your reference, we can make sure that the colors that we add into the shadows relate to the colors in the light side in a more pleasing way. A lot of times this means that 
the colors in the shadows should be opposite the colors in the light. Meaning, if you're working with, say, more afternoon light, you, it's going to be more of a yellowy, orangey color. So, the opposite of that means that the shadows are going to be more of a purple, dark blue, indigo type of colors to correlate what's happening with those two opposing colors on the color wheel. To take it a step further, use a color scheme that allows for more interesting dark colors. So if we want to take it even more advanced, we can pre-plan our color scheme so we can look at the scene as we see it and then refer to the color wheel and build a pleasing combination of colors so that we can then layer on to the observed scene. We can then take the observed color and substitute in the corresponding color from our new limited color palette. The moment I learned how to get better reference of the scenes I was experiencing was when I feel like my color observation skills and just my color practice in general started to really take off. So this is just one of the ways I help my students go from just okay color to getting compliments on the colors of their paintings. So if you want to learn more about my process, I actually have a six week gouache painting course coming soon. It's going to be online via Zoom and it starts on November 2nd. So if you want to learn more about that, um, send me an email, Sergio at SergioLopezFineArt.com. I'll get back to you with more details and we can hop on a call and discuss whether it's a good fit for you. All right. Well, thanks for watching this and I hope you got something out of it. I'll see you in the next video.